What is object-oriented programming? When was it invented? 1966. 1966, the first object-oriented language was written. Um, 20 years after the first computer was built, by the way. It was uh, invented by two guys in Norway, Ole Johan Dahl, Christian Nygaard. They were um, writing a simulator in a language called Algol, uh, which nowadays nobody uses, but it was very popular in the 1960s. Um, Algol is a block structured language, and I'll get into that in just a minute. The simulator that they were writing was a simulator that tracked ships in and out of the fjords. Oil had been discovered in the North Sea, right? Had to get those oil tankers in and out. So they were simulating the ships flowing in and out. And these two guys um, got tired of doing that. And so they did what any good geek would do. Uh, they started to hack on the language instead of the job that they were doing. Uh, maybe we can change Algol to be a little more uh, comfortable for this task. And so they managed to start hacking away on Algol, changing the language itself. And they invented a new language called Simula, Simula 67, they eventually named it. Uh, which had uh, all of the attributes that we would today consider to be uh, object-oriented. It had morphism, it had inheritance, it had encapsulation, it had classes, it had objects, all that stuff was in there. The keyword virtual was invented in Simula in 1966. All the C++ people, uh, I'll tell you a little story about that in a minute. What happened? 1966 this was invented. And yet, it kind of languished. Nobody paid much attention. Why not? Overhead. Overhead. What kind of overhead? Computers were not powerful enough to handle the environment. So this is the 1960s, right? In the 1960s, a really good computer might have 8K. So we were tightly memory constrained. And uh, an object-oriented computer probably needs uh, a heap, because you've got allocated objects. Well, if all you've got in your computer is 8K, you're not going to have much of a heap. And you really can't afford to be flopping things in and out of the heap if all you got is 8K. So maybe there's not a lot of room in your computer for, for objects. So we have to go forward about 20 years. 20 years, 1988, 1989, now we've got computers that can handle this. And objects begins to become more interesting. Where did C++ come from? Who invented it? Janus Truster. He's Danish. Um, when did he invent it? 1978? He wrote a paper in 1980 called C with Classes. In 1983, he changed the name to C++. In 1986, he wrote the very famous book, the C++ programming language, that convinced all the C programmers in the world that this was the language they should all be using. Jana, prior to that, had been in Edinburgh um, as a student, played Ellie and Singer. And they said, no, you're not doing Simula. And he said, oh, yes, I am. And he wrote a little preprocessor in front of C that made C look like Simula. And that's why C++ has the keyword virtual. Many of the concepts moved from Simula into C++. The other object-oriented language that got started back then was Smalltalk. Smalltalk was started in the late 70s by a guy named Alan Kay. Alan Kay had been a Simula programmer. And then he went to Xerox Park and he learned a few things and... Somebody decided to uh, have a challenge to uh, write a small object-oriented language in less than a day. And the guy who worked for Alan Kay came back a day later with Smalltalk. And then they built on it and built on it and built on it. Smalltalk became the other object-oriented language. It sounds like JavaScript. <laughs> um, it is remarkably similar to JavaScript. The original author of JavaScript wanted to write Lisp, but he didn't have enough time, so he, he did this bastardization of the language self uh, and kind of dumped it on the world, and now we have JavaScript. <laughs> many, many, many of our languages came from a, a session like that where some other programmer just didn't like the language they were using and did something to hack it and turned it into another language. How many languages started that? C. C was just a derivation of another language called B, right? <laughs> which was a derivation of another language called, not A, right? BCPL. Um, Algol turned into Simula, C turned into C++, C++ turned into Java and C Sharp. All of our languages are really just kind of evolved from other languages. There's this lovely tree of inheritance all the way back to Alan Turing. <laughs>